This has been two and a half years in the making. And today, we're gonna be diving into the future of SLS printing. We've got this box, this box, and this box, packed with everything you need to start printing and bring your ideas to life. Let's get into these boxes and see what's inside, starting with the printer. Ooh, all right, let's get this thing out. All right, let's take a look inside the printer. First, we'll look at the air filter and make sure it's fully seated. The filter is a two-stage carbon HEPA filter designed to capture contaminants from the laser sintering process. The filter needs to be replaced every 300 hours, but don't worry, the printer will remind you. Moving on, it's time to install the four halogen heating lamps, which are the key to maintaining the correct surface temperature. Flip the printer upside down to access the lamp sockets. Each lamp has its specific socket, so make sure you're matching them correctly. Insert one end, push it in gently, and then the other, and give it a slight twist to ensure it's properly seated. With the lamps installed, we can now move on to the build chamber. Make sure to remove the shipping brackets to free it up. Now, we'll give the recoder lead screw a gentle twist. You should feel very little resistance. With the recoder slightly back, we can now install the overflow filter, ensuring the little tab is at the front. It's crucial to ensure that all motors are operational. The build chamber comes with a small built-in battery to move the motors, but it may be low on charge. So, connect the 24 volt power adapter included with the sift bin. To test the build plate, press the down button to lower it and the up button to raise it. Finally, press both up and down buttons at the same time to test the auger rotation. It will rattle a little bit without powder, which is normal. Let's move on to the sift bin. In here, you'll find all of your accessories, including a detachable dust extractor and your starter pack of powder. Make sure the bin is empty and install the mesh using the two provided clamps and M3 screws. Now, before we get to the exciting part, Let's talk safety. Nylon 12 powder is non-toxic, but if inhaled in significant amounts, it can cause discomfort. Normally, dust doesn't spread around thanks to our dust extractor and built-in filters. However, spills can still happen. So as a precaution, it's best to wear an N95 mask. Back to the fun part. Instead of pouring powder directly into the print chamber, always sift it first to avoid clumps. Attach the detachable dust extractor like this Plug in the 24 volt power adapter and turn it on. Next, take your fresh powder and pour it into the sift bin. The dust extractor will keep your workspace clean by sucking up all the loose powder particles. Once you've emptied the bottle, close the lid, remove the dust extractor and give the bin a good shake to sift the powder through. This should take about a minute. For best results, tilt the bin left and right while shaking it back and forth to keep the mesh from clogging. Now, attach the dust extractor to the back of the build chamber. Make sure the build plate is all the way up and the recoder is fully forward. Open the fill port. If it's stuck, use the back of the sweeping tool to loosen it. Then, take the sift bin, rest it on the edge of the build chamber, turn the spout down, open the cap, and tip it forward. A gentle tap on the bin will help the powder flow smoothly into the chamber. This process should take about a minute. Once all the powder is transferred, close the cap and set the bin aside. Reinstall the fill cap on the chamber. It doesn't need to be super tight. Before starting every print, we should always take a lint-free wipe, wet it with rubbing alcohol, and clean the glass plate and IR sensor window. Then align the triangle on the glass with the one on the build chamber. For the final step, let's insert the chamber into the printer. Push it in firmly until it latches. When you close the door, ensure there's no resistance. If you feel resistance on the door, remove the chamber and reinsert it carefully. Don't force the door shut. Everything's set, so let's power up the printer. The included SD card has a pre-sliced print file so we'll select that, and we're printing. Now that the printer is done leveling the powder surface and is preheating, 
Check that all four halogen lamps are lighting up correctly. If any aren't, turn off the printer and reseat them. Be careful as they may be hot. An hour later and our print is done. To get it out, first attach the fume extractor to the bin and turn it on. Then remove the chamber and set the glass plate aside. It may still be hot. Now place the scoop in the build chamber, aligning the walls of the scoop with the walls of the build area like this. Gently hold down the scoop and hold the up button until the entire powder cake is lifted up. Then scoop it up and carefully dump the powder into the sift bin. Top off with fresh powder to make up for what was used in the parts. Eyeballing is fine. Close the lid and give it a good shake. This could take one to three minutes. Let's reattach the dust extractor and take a look at our print. Open the lid slowly to allow the extractor to clear any dust. Shaking the bin gets rid of most of the powder, but for best results, clean the part in a sandblaster with glass beads. If you don't have one, you can brush it off in the sift bin. The dust extractor has a slot to place the glass plate, creating a mini fume hood to contain the dust while you brush. And there we have it, our first part printed on the Micron Desktop SLS 3D printer. In our next video, I'll be going over some best practices for slicing your own parts in Micro Slicer. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. Join us on Discord and follow our socials to keep updated. And of course, if you have a question, leave it in the comments below.